Hello, and welcome back. Uh, my name is still Gino Canessa, uh, and we're here in part two of the uh, C Sharp uh, Smart via local web server uh, tutorial. Uh, and there's part one that just kind of described the project, what we're doing, set up the repo, set up uh, the C Sharp project, installed all the NuGet packages, uh, and now we can jump right into the, uh, the nitty-gritty and, and do some coding. So, with that said, uh, we're back here on the Smart App Launch page uh, because this is where we're going to need to start is uh, how to actually get access to the Smart Server. Or, yeah, to the authorization server. So the first thing you can see, we need to access the Firebase URL slash metadata. Or, in uh, reading this, you can see here below, uh, we can also access the well-known Smart Configuration JSON file. Uh, and if you're not familiar, dot well known is just a way of uh, servers posting things that are for common services. Uh, so in this case, uh, Smart went through and registered something for smart-configuration.json, uh, and that's a way that you can access uh, the config for Smart if a server supports it. And it's easier to check if something supports it because you can just ask uh, for that file and see if it exists. But uh, in this case, we're going to start with fire because that's kind of what we're trying to do. We'll probably end up doing both of these. So uh, with that said, oh, we don't even have our project open. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start with that. All right. And this is where we left off. Uh, we have a matching branch. We're in main right now, uh, but we do have a matching branch uh, get branch minus uh, ID, end of part one, and that can be uh, where you pick up because main is going to keep moving forward uh, by the time this is posted. So uh, you can feel free to grab there if you're just jumping in at this point. So uh, here we have our project, and we have public static class program, and we always like to do int uh, because that's nicer. So success is zero. Uh, now here, this is one of the nice things I was talking about uh, in the last video, the dragon fruit that we added. Uh, we can actually just go ahead to main and start adding properties like fire server URL. Oops, and hit the, we can come here and document it. And add, uh, C sharp front, uh, we'll just say program to access a smart fire server with a local web server for uh, redirection. So that's, uh, we described that's kind of our project scope that we want to do. And this is the R fire R4 endpoint. URL. Right? So just adding that, oops, let's just do this so it doesn't argue on us. Main program. Uh, if we build this, and we'll go ahead and build it and come back to PowerShell. So we can come through here and get through all these uh, directories where it actually builds everything. And we have our smart local.exe. So if we run it, we can see by default it just has this hello world like we said. But since we added that dragon fruit project, we can do things like minus minus help. Uh, and you can see our comments that we had typed in up here actually get compiled in uh, for things like help. Uh, so our main program. Description is here, kind of telling the caller what this program is for. It has usage, and then it has the list of options. And you can see the smart fire or the fire server URL that we put in here uh, actually showed up here, and it switched it from the uh, C sharp convention here to uh, kind of the command line convention here. So the it did that for us, and then it actually pulled this comment through as the description of what that option is for. And then it has version and help and everything uh, to get back here. 
So we haven't really taken any time to do any version info, so it's just 1.0 for now. Well, well, we can set that up later if uh, we decide it's worthwhile. So we have our program, we have a fire server URL, and we don't actually want to pass that in every time. So we want to go ahead, come over to the smart launch, uh, smart app launcher, and get a URL that we can set as a default. Uh, now in this case, we were saying we definitely want a standalone launch, uh, and we can decide whether we want provider or patient. Uh, in this case, why don't we say we're doing a provider? That's, I think, uh, a little more fun for this case. Uh, we definitely don't want to skip the authorization screen, and we do want to go ahead and pre-populate a provider. Um, that just makes the authorization simpler here. Uh, it is giving us some hints here, so we can see if we wanted to preset a launch patient scope, we could do that. Uh, and if not here, we can set the provider, which gets set in the OpenID and Fire user scopes. So I think we're looking pretty good here. We want Fire R4, provider standalone launch. We'll pick a patient uh, at runtime, and but we do want to pre-populate a provider. We don't want to skip any of those screens and we don't want to simulate any errors. So it gives us a URL that we can copy. Uh, and here we'll want to set that uh, private const string default fire server URL, and we can just put this in here so we have it. So uh, here we can say uh, if the string is null or empty, and that's our fire server URL, then we want to use our default. Perfect. So, just to make sure this is working, we can say uh, fire server and put fire server URL here. So, when we run this guy now, we should see. Turn off that side. Perfect. So we do have our fire server that we're using, uh, and I do know that we want a trailing slash on the end, uh, just to make our lives easier. Uh, it's really whichever way you want to do it. Uh, I like the convention of including trailing slashes, um, but uh, just if you're using some of the URI builders and things like that, it'll take care of it for you. Uh, but if you're doing things with strings, it won't. So I always like to ensure when I put them in, I have a convention, and then uh, I'll often check for that uh, in other places. So um, we're good. We have our fire server, but we haven't done anything yet. Now, if we remember, the first thing we need to do is get the metadata. Uh, we're definitely going to uh, want to I think we'll want that in a separate function. Well, we'll definitely want to create our fire client here, I think. So if I make a fire client, uh, and it's going to yell at me here because it's going to say it doesn't know this. And in this case, I'm just going to fully qualify it because I don't necessarily want to add all of these to my main program. Uh, and we'll do a new fire client and we will give it the endpoint for the fire server URL that we just set up here. So that looks good. Uh, we probably, just for sanity, eh, we want to make this. We don't know what we're going to be doing with it, so we, we won't try and add it to anything else late yet. But I think we want to add a new file. And we'll call this uh, fireutils.cs for now. So it's not, uh, you know, generally speaking, uh, I don't like to dump a lot of things in utils, uh, but it's useful when you're just figuring out what you want to have. Uh, I like to do it and then uh, just refactor things out later. So in this case, we do know this is going to have all of our fire stuff in it. So we, we can go ahead and add these as usings here uh, so that we uh, don't have to qualify everything. 
So these that we picked up here, these are ones that we learned back in our last set of tutorials uh, that we're going to need. So the model uh, namespace here, that includes all of the actual resources, data types, things like that. Uh, REST, that's the functionality we need to actually connect and communicate with the server. And then serialization, uh, that's what we need to convert things back and forth between XML and JSON and C sharp uh, objects. So that's a pretty good set. And I generally uh, always know that I'm going to want system uh, collections generic because uh, we're going to end up using a list somewhere. So uh, we can make this a static class or an abstract class. It doesn't uh, affect us too much now, but we want to make sure that our utilities don't uh, don't get uh, instant, uh, create an instance of them. So we know we're going to have a fire client, so we can say we're going to need a function here. And uh, let's see, public static. Oh, there we go. We'll do change our name here. Fire utility functions. Since we don't know where, what we want this to look like quite yet. Uh, and we want a function to discover what we need of smart. Now, what we actually need, and you can see here, uh, you can either get from metadata or well-known smart configuration, but we're going to need the authorize and token endpoint URLs. So that's what we're after here is two URLs. So we're going to say, uh, uh, well, we can just say get uh, smart URLs. That sounds good. Uh, we're going to need a fire client. And then we're going to return a, we said authorize and token. So authorize, yeah, authorize URL and token URL. So we have this. Um, perfect. So we're going to get from metadata and see what this looks like. So metadata, we know from uh, our previous uh, set, we know is the capability statement is actually what metadata returns. So capability statement, and we can just call it capabilities because that's what it really is. Uh, and we're going to have to do fire client get, and we're going to get from metadata. And it's already yelling at us here because this returns a resource and this wants a capability statement. Uh, in this case, we know that that's all it can return, capability statement. And if it doesn't, we're fine throwing an error because we don't care. Um, now, what we're going to have to do is figure out how we get everything. So what I like to do is grab, I will grab it from here, our URL. And we'll just pull up Postman. Oops. And run this. So we can see, oh, this is the base resource. We forgot to add our metadata here. There we go. So now we can see we have a capability statement. Now, this is a pretty big resource. You can see in this case, it's uh, 376K. So decent size, um, but hopefully what we need isn't too complicated to get. Uh, again, we can see at the top here, it's telling us the resource type is a capability statement. Uh, so that's good. Uh, and what we need are these OAuth URIs. So again, if we look through here, there is a set where it talks about OAuth. Uh, where, where are these? OAuth URIs. So we can find them here just as easily, I believe. Oh, maybe not. That's on the next page that I need to click through too, so we'll grab those in a moment. But we're going to grab from the metadata and get the 
two URIs we need. And we'll find that next page and uh, link it there in a moment. But actually, eh, we'll, we'll find it now. That makes more sense. So we have the power of search. So if we do smart fire OAuth URIs, we have our structure definition. And there is some sort of link from that page to this page, but uh, I, for, some, for whatever reason, I'm having a hard time pulling it up right this second. So never be afraid to go and search for what you want instead. So in this case, what it's telling us is there's an extension that has authorize and token are the two we need. And then there's some optional things here for register, for manage, for introspect, for revoke. So we're not using any of these. The authorized one you can see is mandatory. So it'll always have this. Uh, and here, the token one, it says it's required unless implicit grant flow is used. And so, okay, that makes sense. Uh, and so these are just some extensions that are living on top of part of the capability statement. If we come back to Postman, we can see that that does match. So we have our capability statement. We come in here to REST. So it's talking about the RESTful interface for the server. And then there's a security section. And then there's extension that has these OAuth URIs. But that actually has another extension with two more values. Now the trick here is that extension data type, and we can go look at the extension data type itself. And this grabbed from STU3 for whatever reason. We can grab from R4 and look for extension. You can see that extension just has a single URL and a single value, zero or one actually. But you can't have multiple values in an extension. So the way you actually do that is by building this relative extension tree. So you can see the base extension has this full URL describing what it is. And then it has a list of extensions. And you can see these are just kind of appended on the end. So it's like saying OAuth URI slash authorize, OAuth URI slash token. But that lets you put multiple values in the same one. Um, structurally, this would be similar to saying there's a bunch of extensions here, one that's this plus authorize, one that this plus token. Uh, but this way, you're forced to keep them together as a single element. So uh, shouldn't be too complicated here. We just need to grab from the capabilities statement, find the rest element, which is an array. So we'll want to keep that in mind. Find the security, which is an object, and then start going through the extensions. So we come back to our fire utils, and let's, let's uh, start figuring out what that's going to look like. We, in this point, should have capabilities. And we know that we wanted capabilities.rest. And we can just start typing that even to see what we get back. So we get a list of capability statement rest components. Now, we know we're going to have to go through them. So we could use var here. Uh, some people oops, prefer, uh, I prefer to put static types uh, in everything, just so that uh, that way, if I change something, I immediately know that I have to deal with it. So we know that this is a capability statement REST component, and we'll just call it REST component in capabilities REST. Perfect. Now, from here, we said we needed to find one called security. And so we can see security is here. So we just want to make sure that there is one. So if um, security is null, we'll say. Then we want to throw new exception, uh, no sec security element found. So if there isn't any security thing here, then we can't have a smart server and we won't be able to figure it out. Uh, if we go back over here, we can say from security, we want extensions. So same thing, there's a list of extensions. So we already know we're gonna want for each extension and we want security extension uh, uh, in 
rest component dot security dot extension. And then we're going to go through here. Now, the way we identify the extension is by these URLs. So we're just going to copy this guy over and say if uh, security extension dot URL is not this one that we want, then skip this element because we could have lots of extensions and we don't we want to make sure we're only grabbing from the ones we intend to. So uh, we know we're on the right extension now and then we need to if we remember go through its extensions to find the next two. So uh, we can just say same thing here we want to say if uh, security extension dot extension is null or zero and actually I don't think we even want to throw here now that I'm thinking about it we'll just continue we'll just skip so uh, because there might be multiple of these and so not having the security element just means maybe check the next one so we'll wait and then at the end if we haven't found what we need we can throw an exception there so uh, let's see where were we um, we want to say security extension is null or security extension dot count oops dot extension dot count is zero uh, then we want to skip this one as well and then if not we'll go same thing we're going to go for each and we want to look at extension and this is smart extension we'll call it in security extensions dot extensions that's pretty terrible kind of convoluted uh reading it all out loud but uh hopefully it's clear since we're building it up step by step here but we want to read from the smart extensions and now we're going to want to act depending on again the url so we're going to switch uh, based on the smart extension dot URL and then we're going to add our two cases so remember the two we care about are this authorize endpoint and the token endpoint so those are the two we care about and everything else we can ignore when we have authorize we want to set the authorize URL to now remember we're going to do smart extension dot value and now we're going to oh there we go we can say get extension value and we want to uh, that looks like it uh, oh there we go get extension value on authorize and we want to get uh, and this you can see here there's a value URI so we want to use a fire URI to get the extension value and then we just do to string so here we're going to say grab the extension value which is going to be typed as a URI and go from there so if you remember again just looking at our extensions this could be any type so it could be a value URI, it could be a value string, it could be a Boolean. We don't know what it is. And in this case, we do because we've keyed off of, if we're in Fire, Registry, Smart Health IT Org, Structure Definition, OAuth, URIs, Authorize, we know it's a URI. And then we'll do the same thing for token. So we're just going to grab the token URL and do that. So there's some other models we could do for this. Uh, for instance, we could come here and just say, uh, you know, token URL. And here, we'll, we'll do this one differently just so that we have uh, some practice with it. But we can see we have the value and we can just grab that. The problem is that it doesn't know what it is. And so we can even just come here and cast this as a fire URI. And then since we want the string, we actually get the value to, uh, to string. And so this, we might actually have the same thing. Yep, we need to grab the value to, to string. There we go. So good that I did that. 
So you can see now we'll set those if we have them and we want to handle the case where we don't have them. So here what we'll want to do is probably at the beginning just set them to something we know. So like authorize URL equals null, token URL equals null. Uh, we can even use string.empty, which is nicer for uh, processing in case we, we lose track of them here. So now at the end, we can say if either of these is null, and we don't need this extra set of parentheses, uh, or string dot is null or empty token URL, uh, then what do we want to do? I think we want to change this from a void to a bool. Uh, and then we can actually call this try get smart URLs. So then in this case, we can just return false, and otherwise we're going to return true. So this is saying if we're missing either the token URL or the authorized URL, uh, we're gonna say that we failed. So that makes sense to me. And we just need to document and call this. We can document it after we kind of think it's working. Uh, but we want to go ahead and say fire utils dot try get smart utils and we want to pass it our fire client and our authorize URL and our token URL. And now if this fails, so if this fails, then we want to do something like uh, failed to discover smart configuration, smart URL endpoints, I like that better. Smart URLs, even easier, and return minus one. So we're, we're gonna fail. And then otherwise, we're going to go ahead and tell the user what we did find. So in this case, we'll say uh, authorize URL and put authorize URL and then same thing we'll put uh, what was it token URL and I like to line all these things up and I'm actually going to line them up with Authorize is the longest one, so uh, this guy needs two spaces. And I just like that when I'm looking at uh, looking at output. So at this point, we can try and run everything. And we should see, oh, exception, null reference ex exception. So we, we uh, did not do this line of code right. Let's grab this guy and see if that is the correct way. That's the normal way I do it, but I wanted to see what that other function looked like. There we go. So we have an authorized URL and you can see we have the full URL that we expect and the token URL and these do match what these look like over here. All right, uh, so I think that might be a good stopping point for this uh, segment. Uh, so in the next session, we will go ahead and uh, start accessing. Oh, actually, we need to set up our web server next, I believe. So before we can actually complete the workflow, we'll need that. So uh, we'll pick up in the next video. And again, questions, comments, please let me know. And uh, otherwise, see you then. Thanks.